Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania is a movie that you have to see to know what's going on with the Marvel Universe. It will introduce the next generation of Avengers, which is considered smarter, more powerful, and more ambitious than Thanos. Quantum Mania may open the way for many new characters in the future, or welcome the old superheroes of X-Men and Fantastic Four about the home of Marvel. So what you need to do right now is to learn about the origin, the power of Kang the Conqueror, and a little bit about the universe in MCU to prepare to watch Quantumania. To understand the danger of Kang the Conqueror, as well as many other characters, we need to look for comic books. But unlike the other characters, Kang has the most complex source of Marvel comics, with a variety of versions, names, and stories. This may be easy to understand, because we are talking about a character that can travel through time. And it's even more complicated when Kang still has a lot of pages in Marvel's universe. So, to make it simple, I will only mention the most important details of Kang's version. In principle, Ken the Conqueror, also known as Nathaniel Richards, was born in the 1930s in the 6311 universe. That's right, unlike the heroes and villains who are too familiar with Marvel fans, Ken does not originate from the 616 universe, but comes from a much more advanced reality. Another interesting thing about Ken is that he is likely to be both the descendant of Reed Richards or Mr. Fantastic, and also of the villain Doctor Doom. The story of Nathaniel Richards began at the age of 56 when he was visited by himself, traveling from the future, when he became Ken the Conqueror. Too scared with the prospect of becoming a villain, Nathaniel used Ken's power to return to the present of the 616 universe, forming the Young Avengers to be ready to face the Punishers. And although defeated by Ken, Nathaniel eventually still had to return to the original timeline to realize his fate of becoming a villain in order to preserve the history that took place on the right course, and the Young Avengers group was not erased from reality. Many years later, Nathaniel gradually became bored with Ken. And so, after discovering a time machine that traveled back to ancient Egypt, the famous pharaoh Ramtut used his knowledge of future technology to punish the entire kingdom. During this time, Kang has met many Marvel superheroes, such as the moon god Khonsu, or the first cause of the apocalypse. His time as a priest only ended after he was turned upside down and defeated by the Super Four, along with the help of Doctor Strange. After that, Nathaniel tried to return to the ancient era but was taken by a time storm to the 40th century, where mankind was fighting with weapons of the past that they did not really understand how to operate. Using his knowledge of these technologies, Nathaniel quickly conquered that era, and this is also when he officially became the King of the Conqueror. After collecting all the land, Kang continues to punish the monarchs around the bank, but even so, it may still not be enough, because over and over again, he is still eager to punish the superheroes. In order to do all these things, obviously Kang the Conqueror must have some special ability. But maybe many people who don't read the book will be surprised to know that Kang doesn't have any superpowers. All of these superpowers come from the technology of the future. The first and most outstanding feature is the ability to travel through time. In fact, Kang is the only one in the Marvel Universe who can do this without creating a short period of time. Kang also has a super intelligence although it is quite difficult to measure when he clearly comes from the future. But when compared to the heroes of the present, Kang can control much more advanced machines than Tony Stark's technology. Not only that, he also possesses all the knowledge of all his fields in the universe. This amount of knowledge is not limited to technology. To be able to conquer from one era to another, Kang has a military and political Lamorna. And like all other villains, he also has extraordinary combat ability, which can be compared with heroes like Captain America. In addition, Kang always equips himself with the latest weapons, such as the blue-purple armor, which is controlled by thought, can create white armor and shoot energy bullets, as well as give people superhuman health, and can even restore instantly all weapons from any era. But the most dangerous weapon? It's not only capable of helping people travel in space and time, it can also be used to contain countless soldiers in it. In addition, the tank also has a series of large caliber robots called Growing Man, which are hidden at different times to be ready to support in every battle. Although, like all other supervillains, Kang the Conqueror has been defeated many times in the comics, but just looking at the tactics of the Punisher is enough to see that he is one of the most dangerous characters that has appeared in Marvel Comics. Right in the first clash with the Avengers, Kang easily defeated and captured almost all of the team's members. 
Even when Captain America continued to fight, Kang immediately expelled Captain America back to the 40s. But Kang's Punisher tactics didn't just stop at using force. Every time he returned to the early 20th century, he used his knowledge of robot technology to continuously influence the events of the Avengers for nearly a century. During this time, he also built Quinopolis, a city at the crossroads of the present, past, and future. It was here that Kang watched the Avengers day and night and monitored all the punishments he was carrying out in the future. Another version of Kang also had a similar idea, but returned to the 6th century to hope to erase all the ancestors of superheroes. And that's not to mention the events that Ken didn't directly touch, but still had an impact. Those are all the times he manipulated other Marvel characters, from his young self, Iron Lad, to Black Bolt's son, or even super talented villains like Doctor Doom or Apocalypse. Well, that's it for the story. So what about in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Where does the story of the character who is said to play the next Thanos of MCU begin? In the 31st century, Nathaniel Richards discovered the existence of multiverse and other variants of himself in those times. Nathaniel's variants found a way for everyone to communicate and meet. They shared knowledge as well as their most advanced technology to help other universes. However, not all of Nathaniel's versions are as good as that. Some names have an idealistic idea, like Kang the Conqueror, and want to rule other universes. And so the multiverse war broke out. He who remains discovered Alia and used its power to turn it into a weapon. He became the winner of this war and ended the multiverse war. After that, he who remains tried to create his own timeline and called it the Sacred Timeline. However, he knows that this war can always come back so he set up the TBA organization to manage the timeline and prevent it from splitting. In addition, he also created timekeepers to hide his identity. He Who Remains has always maintained the stability of the universe for many millennia. He can see all the events that have, are, and will happen in the universe. That's until Loki and Sylvie find Citadel at the end of time and make the timeline split. Before he died, Kang warned Sylvie that if he didn't, no one would delete the new timeline. Loki wanted to replace He Who Remains with a timeline to hide his evil versions. However, Sylvie didn't believe him and ended He Who Remains. As a result, from that moment on, the timeline began to split, and no one could control it. Many of the isolated elements were connected to the rest of the multiverse, opening the way for Kang the Conqueror to return. However, maybe Sylvie wasn't the only one who made the timeline split. Doctor Strange's broken spell also brought the evil names and the other two versions to 616. According to many theories, the Grand Master used the spell right at the time He Who Remains passed away, so no one prevented the timelines from connecting. That's why the characters in parallel universes can meet. Back to Loki, it seems that after He Who Remains died, the Fire God was sent to a laboratory where Kang controlled the timeline and allowed Mobius to expand the other 63 timelines. Quantum Mania is the opening work of MCU's Phase 5, with the appearance of a new supervillain, like Thanos from Infinity Saga. So the film will have to do well in introducing this villain to the audience, so they can clearly understand his origins, strength, and goals. In addition, Quantum Mania may also open the way for many new characters for the next stages of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It could be Deadpool, Wolverine, The Avengers, and Fantastic Four. They will come to Earth-616 through the Gate of Hell. In general, Quantum Mania is an exemplary work for the entire long-term future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in at least three to four years. So we clearly should not ignore this work if we don't want to be deprived of knowledge about Marvel in the future. As we know, the next Avengers movie is Kang Dynasty. It will start with Kang the Conqueror's journey in Quantum Mania. Maybe he is one of the most evil mutants in He Who Remains. He hides and dies before his time is erased and stuck here. Scott Lang is the only clue that can help him get out of this place. So when he saw the family of ants coming here, he found a way to force Scott to work for him, forcing him to steal something he has always craved to be able to escape. Maybe after this movie, he will succeed, and after escaping, he will find a way to restore his universe, and beyond that is to rule all the other universes. And why does he want to conquer both universes? Maybe we'll have to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania to find out. It will be very interesting if the motive of Kang the Conqueror is revealed in this film, and the audience will have to guess what he will do in the next films.
Even the future of MCU will be more interesting if Marvel introduces more new Kang versions, or reveals to us more unique and more dangerous versions of him in the future. Do you want crazy things to happen in Quantumania? Scott Lang will be trapped in the underworld? Kang the Conqueror is defeated to open the way for another version of him? Or, a lot of Kang will work together to rule the universe? Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye, and see you soon. May the Force be with you. I'm gonna make him an offer again. Play as time goes by. Hasta la vista, baby.